Hello and welcome as it is the uh, 23rd day of May 2019. My name is Derek. All bets, trades, and of the like, that's within each's own risk and their own reward. I'm going to try to make this a relatively faster video, but go over the key points that I want to. All bets, trades, of the like, that's within each's own risk and their own reward. Let's start off with Chain. This price was at 866. It went down to 222, basically about a 4x move. And since then has uh, now managed to uh, uh, sideways the band and, and go above it in here and spend uh, two days doing this following. That's This is what you see in the bear markets that are like, oh, geez, not so great because you have a move up here. Now it's important to hold the 18 lows and stay above this area. It couldn't do it. It has this moves in here. Now we have established this level of resistance. So if you can stay and hold above, even a pierce below it in this area roughly around here within the 18 lows well that's important so far it's not only been able to do such it's also been able to hold at the previous resistance within that of the 18 highs yesterday's day after the move higher well it came back to the previous level where it came from it had pretty much a pause day it was an inside day and now we're seeing that it's breaking out north above it from this point forward, like a lift off from the 18 average of low. So I really like it set up in here. For our term time frame, we have this uh, situation where this level of uh, previous, uh, well, this support happens to coincide with uh, these areas where it came from. The level of uh, these two levels of support resistance. See, now if it's going to come have another test up here, uh, even if, as it is now, I like to see it as it is, hold and stay above this level for a good amount of time if it's not ready yet to break out above it. But in the situation about, and breaking out above this established level of resistance in here, it could have a decent gain. Now, this one only had a mad gain because it broke above this level of established resistance here at the 12 period. It went from uh, 314 up to uh, 350. So, man, it had a gain of 36 points. But volatility, 36 points on 314 is greater than that of 10 percent on the single hour term time frame what we can see is that uh it has i'm just the level i'm just going to ignore this right now this little line in here but even on a big breakout above the 350 i'm going to be looking especially if it does it in here now I'm going to be looking for a range of 325 to 350 to be where the comeback area is. And then more importantly, a decent size leg higher if this thing is going to react towards such. As far as a weekly term time frame, there's not much data on here. But it still has the 18 average of lows in at 426, which is declining. And the 18 average of highs in at 550, which really is starting to retrace from this low towards this high. Let's move on to Doji. And in determining the trend here, bearish, bullish, neutral. Well, we have this high here. I mean, it's This is the resistance between 97 here and 187. Support basically where the line is now at 38, even down to like 15 or 16 area. And until it breaks below, maybe resists this general area of about 32, and just makes this move. That This move is nothing, basically going down below. But maybe there's a chance, and I'm not saying there will be, but until it does the move to zero, or it can find a way to hold and stay above 100 and have a great accelerated move, probably at least to about three to 500, then this is gonna stay neutral. Which means, play the highs, play the lows, and the buy low, sell high game, yeah, it could work out pretty good. I wanna show this more important for I mean, the daily term, it's doing like whatever, has its failed breakout, fast move lower, now having its correctionary test within the 18. But I want to focus this mainly towards that of uh, the short term, because with markets like this, you can clearly see where the bid-ask prices are. So in here, you can see, oh, 41 and 40. Well, that means during this time, the sellers had the ask price in at 41, and the buyers had it in at 40. And then the 40 got exhausted. Somebody sold it down. Then they started selling into the 39s. 40 sell orders would start to pop up, and so on and so forth. So it's interesting because there's not often in these charts you can see, if you look at it, what the buy and sell is. But if you're looking at it not now, if you go into Polo and and probably Bitrex is the exact same as well. If you're gonna to want to sell, it's gonna you're gonna get 37. And if you're gonna to want to buy, you get 38. If you put a sell order at 38, 
then you're a last priority from that point up, moving at that level. Anyone after you will be behind you, so it's like waiting in a line at an amusement park. Except for there's no cutting in lines. At least there better not be, or that would be corruption and manipulation within the software. Anyway, 37, same thing. If you want to buy that, you'd be last in line. I put a buy, I put a buy order in for 38, 36, and 34, and I did so after this high. I've already had my 38 get filled, obviously. So 36, I got okay, decent priority given the fact that I did that about a week ago. Moving on to Bitcoin Cash, just a quick look at this. Many resistance points at the 522 handle, now down to uh, 508. 18 average of lows is rising, and it's in at 485 right now. And uh, still holding in there, still making the higher lows, but we still uh, are in the setup mode of, oh, this looks good, it probably should break out. But that means probably means greater than 50%. And speaking about probably, I've been talking about within Bitcoin about, uh, pr it, I think it's got a better chance of going to 10, that's the 63, or the break of 98 or the two FIB levels. That being at 63.41.9 and 98.14.08. And it's a little closer down to here. Uh, it's, to me, going back, if you were to say down in this bottom as it's going up and breaking the uh, 40, the low 4,000 level, okay, yeah, you can expect to have some resistance somewhere within this congestion area. No. Okay, well, can it get above this high? Well, it's matched it. Okay, next step. Next step. Really, for what it's worth, as long as it can hold and stay above 6,000, that is magnificent. And then we're still waiting for the 18 to rise, basically, to that. The 18 average of highs on the weekly is in at 50... Uh, maybe just 5,800 and the 18 average of lows is 5,000. Give it a couple more weeks and it'll just rise. Maybe this will be a pause week. Maybe this is the breakout week. Maybe it's going to go down. I'm just giving all the different options. And that's one of the things I said before the week. Maybe it's a pause week. I'd like the odds it was going to be an up week. Overall, though, when you look at things on the more shorter term time frames, there isn't anything yet to state that I really am going to give the bears any conviction in here. We have this uh, low in here, breaking it above, still supporting within the 18. Yes, it didn't break above it, and we could be doing double top formations, but it still has a lot more weakness to go just to even go below any of the key necklines that there may be. Overall, within the four-hour time frame, getting maybe a little choppy, uh, going below the 18, above it, and now a little bit below it again. So this was a chance to break out above. Obviously, within its correctionary phase, was unable to do so. Then this red candle down at the 16-hour timestamp. And it's been four hours just going sideways and congesting with it, waiting now with the market correction through time for the 18 average to get in there. But it's barely even below that. And even on the single-hour term time frame, these last few hours is just a retest of this previous level. Really, the one thing is that it has spent the entire time over the last uh, half-day plus in this area where it was a quick move here. But it's barely, barely down. And when we're looking for... Uh, any type of correctionary moves. It is technically just came down to this area where it came from. And it, is, it isn't even down to come into its more appears a nice fit in between it, like roughly around here. I don't, don't know how to explain it better. But yeah, that's uh, how I'm looking at the Bitcoin chart. That'll be it for today's video. I did make it under 10 minutes. That was my plan. And I got every single topic and not a single bit more that I was planning on talking about. Thank you for watching and having yourself a great day. Bye-bye.